which now brings us to chapter two, because you're thinking, okay, all is well. This is this is a great love story, uh, uh, unlikely, but great love story that has taken place, and we're on our way, right? So chapter two opens with kind of a sad part of the story, because again, we would think, ah, this is going well. Well, it doesn't go well, because there's, there's a breakup here that leads to some pretty, um, pretty serious consequences in verse 2. Yeah, because of the actions of Gomer, she essentially divorced herself from her husband Hosea. So Hosea says to his children, which he's now renamed them slightly, he says, Ami or Ami, my people, and Rama, mercy or love, you children, please plead with your mother because I am no longer her husband, she's no longer my wife. Because of her actions, we've become divorced. God is using this relationship between Hosea and Gomer to show that even though we may have walked away from God by our actions, he will plead with us everlastingly and invite us with loving mercy and kindness back into the covenant. So it's this fascinating turn that we see throughout the chapter that Hosea seems to be, as symbol of God, pained at the loss of his wife who, even though she had done disastrous things, it seems that Hosea did not want the breakage of the marriage. So you pick up the, the story here in verse 5, for their mother hath played the harlot, she that conceived them hath done shamefully, for she said, now as we jump into what she said, notice the focus on self, notice the pronoun usage here. She said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Now, we just went through a long list of, of necessities for life, right? These are, these are things that everybody would, would need, this food and clothing. And anciently, legally, we, we have from surrounding societies legal requirements for a husband to provide these very things for his wife. And so a husband who's not doing that, the wife actually has legal recourse to say, you have not been providing those things to me, I can go find somebody else. And this is the big plot twist, is that how could, now remember, Hosea represents God, God gives us everything. Where are you going to find all these things except with God? And Hosea, who'd been a faithful husband is saying, why are you running after other people for everything that I already offer you? Yeah, so she's going to her former lovers for all these things, and look, let, let's just take a moment and look at this list. That give me my bread and water. Now, I, I don't know that Hosea meant for this to apply in a sacramental context in the, in the latter days. But as we read these scriptures from our perspective today, looking back in time, we can liken this story to us in such a way that it maybe has a little added meaning to us that maybe it didn't have in the Old Testament times where they didn't have the sacrament ordinance. Isn't it fascinating? When do bread and water get removed or taken away from somebody? It's usually only with a serious breakage of a covenantal promise or a, or a covenantal connection. It's usually pretty major sins that cause a person not to be able to partake of the bread and water of the sort from the source of salvation, Hosea, in this case, Jesus Christ. And so it's as if she's saying, I don't want that covenantal connection with you anymore, God. I want, I want the connection with my lovers. I want to go get the pleasures of the world from them. I want to, I want to um, make my offerings at their sacrament tables, so to speak, and not have, at yours. And have them take care of my needs instead of God fulfilling my needs. And then you'll notice the next couplet, my wool and my flax. I don't want the garment that Hosea offers me. I don't want to be clothed by Hosea. I don't want to, to be endowed by him. The word enduo in the Greek means to put on 
a, a sacred garment or to, to be clothed in a sacred garment. I don't want his clothing. I want the clothing of my lovers, the clothing of the world, mine oil and my drink, um, oil that, that provides – has medicinal as well as all kinds of other benefits in their culture, in their time, and my drink, all the sustenance. I don't want any of that that Jesus has to offer. I want that which comes from the world. Now, isn't it fascinating if you look at Jesus as the living water and the bread of life and this, this offers us this oil, this salve to, to soothe all of our struggles, our pains, our afflictions, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and she's rejected all of that. Can you see why there was a divorce? Can you see why there's this separation? It's not because of anything Hosea did. It's one-sided. Look at verse 6. Therefore, which is a cause-effect, the cause is in verse 5, the effect follows in verse 6 and 7. This is the outcome. This is the result of you choosing to turn your back on all these things that Jesus freely offers to us in his gospel. And Hosea had been fully faithful as a husband doing everything that in their society he was legally obligated to do. And she said, that's not enough. In fact, I don't like how you're fulfilling your role as a husband. And so I'm going to go find somebody else. Even though you're doing – she had no cause for complaint. So because of that, here's what he's going to do. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. Uh, there's, there's this amazing concept that C.S. Lewis included in the Chronicles of Narnia in Book One, The Magician's Nephew, as Narnia is being created, and in that first uh, book where you get this new land and then Queen Jadis has been introduced into that world, this evil uh, character, um, there's a tree in a garden with a wall around it, and one of the characters there, Diggory, has to go in and pluck one piece, one apple from that tree and bring it to, to Aslan, the lion, the creator, the Christ figure, and outside of that garden there's a little placard and it has a little rhymed saying. The last two lines of that saying, or of that, that rhyme, listen to this. For those who steal or those who climb my walls shall find their heart's desire and find despair. Brothers and sisters, we live in a world that offers a lot of bread and a lot of water and a lot of wool and a lot of flax and a lot of oil and a lot of drink. It's not – none of which come from the Lord directly. And unfortunately, we live in a day and age when it's very easy to go and get whatever your heart desires, but if we're not careful, like the children of Israel in the kingdom of Israel at the time of Hosea, you're going to get everything that you desire and in the process the thing you're going to find is despair. You're going to find that Alma 41 is true when it says wickedness never was happiness. So Gomer's out looking, she's seeking, and the Lord here is saying she's not going to find. She's not going to find what she really deeply and desperately wants. And finally, when she hits rock bottom, she says, basically, I, I need to return to my first husband or I need to go home, very similar to the prodigal son parable that Jesus is going to tell in Luke chapter 15. It's that idea that for some of you, you might be a point, at a point in your life where you're, you're coming back into the covenant from whatever uh, life experiences you may have had. There's something powerful about coming home to that covenant 
and the church and into those covenants in the temple of our God. There's something that just brings all of those, uh, those former blessings that we used to enjoy back into our life, and don't you love the fact that you don't have a God up in heaven who at this point says, after what you did, no way, Gomer, you're never coming back. Quite the opposite. 